She's got long legs and short shorts, but she ain't got no teeth. She wears a red bandana on her head, and she smiles so, so sweet. She'll steal your heart, a very fish sap should rip apart your soul. She'll torture your mind and waste your time and drag you down the road, cause she's a Jezebel. St. Andrew Jezebel, cause she's a Jezebel. St. Andrew Jezebel. Hey y'all, thank y'all so much for pressing play on the St. Andrew's Jezebel podcast. My name is Ashley. I'm a third generation Panama City native. I play music and I'm also a Floriopolis volunteer. And I am so glad y'all are here. This is our season finale, and it also makes our 68th episode that I've produced in starting my podcast journey in 2020. I want to thank everyone for all your support and for listening. And I'd like to also thank all the fantastic guests who have been on the show. This week, we've got Tyler Reese, who is an up-and-coming songwriter, and he's here to talk to us about his journey as a musician and about the music scene in St. Andrews. I hope everyone has a wonderful St. Patrick's Day. It's definitely my favorite holiday. I wish I could say I was playing somewhere in St. Andrews, but if you're listening now, I'm camping at Spirit of the Swanee Music Park on the Swanee River in Live Oak, Florida, and I'm doing media coverage for the publication I write for, which is called The Jam Witch. So I miss y'all, but I look forward to putting out new stuff for you when I get back. If you've been enjoying the podcast and you'd like to show your support, you can make a one-time donation on our coffee page. I'll link it in the show notes below. You might also notice that the podcast is currently 100% listener supported, but if you'd like to sponsor an episode, just send me a DM and we can coordinate. For a more enhanced experience, follow the podcast on Facebook and Instagram. The podcast is now available to stream directly from Facebook, so if you want to show your support, share this episode with all your salty friends. All right, y'all, let's get to it. I hope y'all enjoy this interview with my friend Tyler Reese. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite beer, and enjoy the show. Today on the St. Andrew's Jezebel podcast, we meet with Tyler Reese, who is a local singer-songwriter who I met a few months ago right here at Floriopolis. We went down to Janie's Fence, we played some music, and ever since, I've really appreciated everything Tyler does. So Tyler, how'd you get into playing music? I got into playing music at a very young age. I play the guitar now, but I started out as a drummer, which I did for a really long time. I think I would say I was probably seven or eight when I got my first real drum set. And a few years after that, I actually gave playing the guitar a go and I got signed up for lessons and everything. And it just did not stick at all. And I went back to just beating on my drum set out in the shed. It was a few years later when I was 14. I was in the ninth grade and I got a Fender Stratocaster for Christmas that it really kind of started to stick with me, like wanting to play the guitar and write songs and kind of sing and all that kind of stuff. I I think we have a lot of the same appreciations for a lot of the same Mm -hmm. songwriters. How did you get into the appreciation of songwriters like John Hartford and John Prine, who are two of my most favorites? Just just kind of over the years, you just listen to more and more stuff and just stumble upon it. I actually discovered John Prine pretty late. I know that before he passed that he was over at the Songwriters Festival, and I knew that he was playing there at the time, but I didn't know who he was. And then after I realized who that was, I'm still disappointed to this day that I did not go over there and see him. But I think my appreciation for songwriting really started with Bob Dylan, as it probably does with a lot of people. And uh, it was when I got my first acoustic guitar, which was pretty shortly after I got my first electric one. And I started really getting into that kind of music. It was about when John Mayer was going through his little folk phase that he went to. And I got into that and then started listening to Bob Dylan, Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, all those kind of artists. And then I just kind of found my place in all of that somewhere. And it's kind of just stuck to this day. It's just... I just appreciate songwriting a lot, and I enjoy doing it. I'm glad you did, because you're a really good songwriter. I really like your songs. Thank you. I've noticed that you're trying to play out more Mm -hmm. live and locally. You've done some open mics at Little Village, and Mm -hmm. also Monday Night Little Fest, and I believe The Market as well, Mm -hmm. and you're working on what you need to play out live. What's your live performance going to look like? In the future, I would like to have more musicians with me. But for right now, I'm kind of okay doing the kind of solo singer-songwriter type thing. As far as I'm kind of learning my way 
in between songs, you know, like you can sit at home and practice all you want for the actual playing part. But when it comes to the little gaps in between, that's where you can either kind of make it or break it with the crowd. And I've found that I have some success kind of getting them on my side. And once I get the crowd going and talking to them and feel like they're liking me and I'm liking them, I really kind of enjoy being able to kind of have that freedom where I'm the only person up here, so I can pretty much just do whatever I want. I think you got great stage presence. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so what are your creative intentions for the spring? To kind of just keep doing what I'm doing, really. I've been playing music for a long time, but the going out and playing side of it, like in public, hasn't come all that natural. As far as I'm a kind of nervous person, but I find that once I do go out and actually put myself in that position, that after you're only nervous until you get up there and you've played maybe one or two songs, and then it's this just beautiful feeling of freedom to where I don't worry about mistakes because I know I'm going to make mistakes. But I know that when I do make those mistakes at this point, or I, I trust my intuition enough that I can kind of come back for it and maybe people probably won't even notice that I even made a mistake. Over time, you'll get better at that. I've mm -hmm. learned to just don't make a face. Yeah. Just act like you didn't do it, and most of the time, it'll go right mm -hmm. over them. And just don't stop. That's the most important yeah, one. Yes, so don't cause... stop, don't make a face, Yeah. And usually they won't notice. Uh -huh. <laughs> or if you do make a face, laugh about it, and yeah. they'll laugh too. <laughs> yeah. What's something about the life of a creative person that's often most misunderstood, do you think? For me, I think I had this misconception when I was starting, but every great song is not written through this like wave of inspiration that people seem to think there is. And for me, I kind of try to make it more of like a work ethic thing to where I try to, even if I'm not inspired, if I sit down enough and do it, I'm eventually going to sit down and be inspired. And then I'll have all this practice that I've built up through making myself do it. And I think a lot of people think that if you write a great song or a good song or even a song that it's because you've kind of hit this point of inspiration to where it just flows freely out of you. And while yes, that is true. And I think, and a lot of good songs are written that way. There's also a lot of good songs that are just written by sitting down and actually just doing the work. For it. And I think that's kind of a misconception that people have. I'm so glad that that's how you look at it because that's really a professional way mm -hmm. to go about it. You know, I, I call that concept of getting in the stream. Once you get in the stream, you just have to start. Yeah, I kind of developed that philosophy from, I read Stephen King's autobiography on writing and he talks about with his writing ethic that he makes himself write like eight pages a day or something while he's writing a book. And uh, yeah, and he talks about how like if you sit down to do the work, eventually the inspiration will strike. And I found for me that's true. If I say I write 10 songs, out of those 10 songs that I write, there is bound to be at least one or two that I really have like a sense of affection for. Absolutely. You got to do a lot of fishing before you get the keepers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, going back on what you said about Stephen King's tactic, there's a technique that's from the book called The Artist's Way called Morning Pages. And mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of like that. And I've fallen off the wagon lately, but when I'm on my game, I write three pages a day. Oh yeah. And it's especially helpful when mm -hmm. you're trying to write songs. I met you here in St. Andrews, and mm -hmm. then we both found out we're, we both live on the beach side, mm -hmm. which is funny. Fairly close to each other, actually. Yeah, that too. <laughs> you can meet your neighbor right here in yeah. St. Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> what do you love about St. Andrews? Well, like I said earlier, I'm a fairly nervous person when it comes to all of this. And I found coming over here that once you do it, there's really no reason to be nervous over here because all the everyone that I've met has been so supportive and just like you especially I've had questions that I'll message you on Facebook and ask you and every single thing I've asked you you've answered with an open heart and just I've found the St. Andrews area to be very welcoming to artistic people and not that other areas aren't like that, but I think that this one, that's kind of what makes it beautiful is that there's so many different artistic people that kind of conglomerate in this area. And it's just a really good, like, artistic musical community over here that I've found. And I'm really enjoying, like, working my way more and more into it. When you look forward to the future in St. Andrews, what do you hope to see? For myself or just overall? For both. For myself, I kind of just want to kind of meet as many people as I can and get my foot in the door at a lot of places and make, build relationships with people that are, you know, lasting. So 
over the course of years, I can play here, play at the tap room, the little village, just kind of play everywhere I can. And I hope for the community part of it, I hope that more creative people who are more at home musicians right now, but are nervous about going out and actually getting themselves in front of a crowd and performing places, I hope that they can kind of work their way over here and find the same thing that I've found, which is that everyone is very welcoming and open and no one over here is judgmental at all. If anything, I think if you come over to the St. Andrews area and play, no one's ever going to think negatively of you. Everyone's going to think highly of you because people respect the fact that it takes a lot to get up there over here. Absolutely. You and Kelsey Iman are two peas in a mm. pod in that regard because, you know, there was a long time when she was somewhat of a closet musician mm-hmm. and now she's been playing out mm-hmm. for a whole year and you're on your way as well. Yep. Yeah. So if you could play any music venue in the world, where would it be and why? This might be kind of a long shot right now, but I'd probably say the Ryman just because of the history behind it. And I know they say about Madison Square Garden, once you sell out Madison Square Garden, that means you have officially cemented yourself in the music industry. And I think kind of in like the Southeast United States, like the Ryman is kind of that. Like once you go and you've played the Ryman, that means you've made it in the South at least. But that would probably be my go-to. I definitely agree with you there. So have you got music online? I have a little bit that I recorded kind of unprofessionally a few years ago, and I'm working on getting some more out. I've met with a few different people in the area because kind of trying to do everything myself, be the recording artist, be the producer, you know, mix, master. There's a lot to all of that. And I found myself kind of getting to the point with it where trying to do it by myself, it's like I just don't want to do it at all. So I've kind of gotten to where I'm trying to find some people to work with all that. Mostly just to where I can kind of record and then somebody else will take it and go, okay, and mix it and master it and get it out. But yeah, I'm kind of still at the first steps with that. But I do have some music online on Spotify, on Apple Music, everywhere pretty much. Fantastic. And what is it called so that folks can find it? Uh, Well, I have a full album out called Diamonds in the Rough, which I recorded when I was 19 years old. But everything that I have released will just be under Tyler Reese. And if you look up Diamonds in the Rough, that'll come up that album. And then I have like a little selection of singles that I've done other than that. Well, Tyler, thank you so much. It's been so so nice to meet you and play music with you. And I really am looking forward to seeing what you do with Mm -hmm. your music and St. Andrews and whatever else you go on to and play music together again. Mm -hmm. So how could folks find you online and beyond? The best way to find me online is going to be either through Facebook or Instagram. Those are my two kind of main social media hubs. And if you go on either of those sites, you'll be able to find anywhere that I'm playing. If I Usually if I go out and I play somewhere, I try to get at least one song recorded video-wise through it. And I always put footage of myself playing. And if I'm there and someone else is playing, I like to put footage of other local artists out. But a Facebook, Instagram, YouTube are my three main ones. So that's what I would say to go with. For and me. you're at Tyler Reese Music, right? Mm-hmm. Tyler Reese Music on all three of those platforms. Fantastic. Well, Tyler, thank you for being here. Thanks for coming to Floriopolis. And until next time, keep St. Andrews salty. One of the best things about St. Andrews is that you can see live music every day. That's right. There is live music being played somewhere in St. Andrews seven nights a week. Fortunately, my friend Ken Schaefer creates and publishes a weekly schedule for St. Andrews as well as most of Bay County. Ken's spreadsheet schedule is updated often when there's any changes. Ken also shares individual music events and is walking the walk and talking the talk when it comes to supporting live music. Not only does Ken supply the music schedules, but he attends several music performances a week and takes fantastic photos of the musicians. As a working musician myself, I feel blessed to have Ken and his wife Donna as treasured members of our local musical family. Make sure you like and follow Ken's page, Salty Sounds in St. Andrews, and Oh Boy Music on Facebook so that you'll always know where all the live music will happen. Thank you so much, Ken, for everything you do. All right, so I'm just going to give you a quick run through of some community events that happen on a regular basis here in Salty St. Andrews. We'll start on Thursday. 
There's Collaboration Night at the Library on Beck that's hosted by Stephen Meyer. They started about seven. Stephen is a great host. He makes everyone feel welcome. So bring your instruments and bring your songs and have a good time. On Friday, there's the Historic Walking Tour at 1 p.m. with Ellen and they meet at the Panama City Publishing Museum. This is an awesome thing to do in St. Andrews. It's light walking, it's educational, and you'll learn a little bit more about our roots. Moving on to Saturday, you've got the market at St. Andrews, and I'm sure there'll be something going on for St. Patrick's Day. They've got lots of great art vendors, there's food trucks, there's live music brought to you by Floriopolis that begins at 10 a.m. It's one of the best things you can do for Saturday in St. Andrews. Moving on to Sunday, you got lots of great brunch options. There's Alice's, I love the shrimp and grits and the Bloody Mary. There's also the tap room, they usually have live music and also a food truck and it's always good no matter what it is they've got all that great craft beer I love the tap room on a Sunday moving on to Monday there's Monday Night Little Fest that's at 6 p.m. also at the tap room and Monday Night Little Fest is a little bit more than an open mic it's more like a showcase every week they feature three or four different musicians from the Panama City area and sometimes they play originals, sometimes they play covers, sometimes they collaborate. It's a really great time for musicians to get together and socialize and support each other. It's really a great time for everybody. On Tuesday, they've got trivia at the tap room at 6 p.m. And then on Wednesday, Floriopolis has open hours from noon to 5. All you need to do is show up. All the paint and canvases are supplied by Floriopolis. And you can work on your painting for next month's theme on Janie's Fence. Also on Wednesday, there's a comedy open mic at the library, and this is hosted by Panama City Comedy. I believe the sign-up is at 7.30, and they start around 8. That's all the community events I've got for this week. Tune on April 7th for more. For our old news segment this week, I've got a poem called Sunsets, which was posted in the St. Andrews Bay News this week in history in 1934. Sunset. All of us love the sunset. None of us can explain why. Maybe it's just because of the beautiful colors that gather and mingle in the sky. It might be because of the one who creates it, how calm, majestic, and beautiful it seems. The same God who made us makes it a series of beautiful themes. Some people see it from the mountaintops in all its splendor and glory, the same as it's been and always will be until fate shall end the story. Lois Carlos. Y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in for the season finale of the St. Andrews Jezebel podcast. We will be back April the 7th, and we've got some great guests in the upcoming season. As always, if you'd like to support the podcast, please visit our coffee page where you can make a one-time donation. And also, please tell your salty friends to follow us on Facebook so you'll receive a notification every Thursday when episodes go live. I should also add that you can now listen to the St. Andrews Jezebel on Facebook and you'll receive a notification every time an episode drops on Thursday. If you liked our theme song, it was written by me and recorded by Dave Schwartz on the campus of Gulf Coast State College. The rest was written by me and recorded in my music room with the interviews recorded at Floriopolis. So we'll see you back on April 7th. I hope everybody's been having a great time and enjoying this wonderful weather we're having. Till next time. Keep St. Andrews salty. Red lipstick, so thick, and a push-up bra. Tramp stamp, stretch marks, and a lacy thong, cause she's a Jezebel. St. Andrew Jezebel, cause she's a Jezebel. St. Andrew.